We saw all sorts of animals that were just caught within that, that horrible web of just rolling ball. And you'd find things like baseballs and toothbrushes and you're wondering how in the world did a toothbrush get into the middle of the ocean. I say it's a 151 foot brigantine which is based here in Sausalito, California. 25 of us went out to sea for 30 days in August and went to the North Pacific Gyre which is formed by four ocean currents and we scientifically studied and collected marine debris. Ultimately, it would make a lot of sense to have a recycling plant on a ship that could be out in the gyre and have smaller vessels feeding it plastic. What was the most surprising thing? That there was plastic in every single one of our samples. Yeah. One of the most shocking things to me was the first day back at work, I, I was walking under the BART tracks to take BART to work and I passed Cerrito Creek in El Cerrito and looked over the side and there was a plastic soda drink with a straw in it and an empty bag of Doritos and a couple other pieces and that that, that really hit me. And there, there it was right there when people ask how does it get in the ocean. And even the placement of where we have landfills, we have landfills that are situated in watersheds. So of course if something's in that watershed area, if there's a heavy rain or if there's any kind of disturbance, it's going to be brought right into the watershed, into the stream systems and out into the ocean. Good morning everyone, my name is Maziar Mobasaki, Acting Director of the Department of Toxic Substances Control, part of the California Environmental Protection Agency. The folks from Project Kaisei are going to talk about a gyre made of plastic debris that is the size of a state. Folks, this is a little sample of what is off 400 miles off of our coast. We've been telling consumers that it's their fault. They created the trash. This new approach, which actually puts um, more of the onus, onus on um, manufacturers and producers, I think is the logical approach. You have government here, you have nonprofit agencies here, you have education agencies, you have research entities here. We need to create a world where products are benign by design. Benign by design. Benign by design. Benign by design. Benign design. Uh, uh, we've been using green design. In short, our most precious resource is slowly transforming into a plastic soup. We only have 10% of the large fish species left. We're seeing large areas of what's called dead zones increasing. And it may be that in our lifetimes we see that there are no more fish species in the ocean.